I think the question, the simple question of why, and I've I've said that from day one. Mm-hmm. If there's, if someone's normal, why? If they're yep. abnormal, why? Yes. If yeah. you constantly ask, in fact, your husband, I was one of his paramedic <laughs> priests, not preceptors, I was one of his yeah. FIs, and mm-hmm. oh God, he would. We would laugh a lot about it because I would always ask him why, and he'd go, "Oh, that question, why? <laughs> it's my favorite John, question. Why? Why? Yes, why? My no, don't favorite just, question. Don't just do. Wonder why. Yes. Wonder why. That's exactly right. So, That's yeah. a, that just helps you like prepare for different situations that could possibly happen. Exactly. It's right. like you know, uh, yeah. Why, why is that happening? Okay, yes. well, keep in mind they're presenting this way because of A, B, C. Mm-hmm. So here are the options that I have on hand to yeah. like listening to you do your inner <laughs> journal. I no, no I don't really appreciate. Show. Don't ever I just was like, I hope this doesn't weird him out. Letting him know, I, like it was a very pivotal that. moment for I'm me. I'm like, hold, hold on, Adam. <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, I'm, I'm going to be like, listen, yeah. you need. just listen to him. That's what. No, I. That was a very pivotal. I have no idea what I'm doing in my career field. I, I have so much more to it. learn because I. Yeah, you, Socrates. You don't know. Socrates. He said, "Wonder, wisdom begins in wonder." That's you have to always question, or you do. Yeah, assuming you know everything is so dangerous. That goes back to what we were talking about earlier with when at what point in your career do you have like the confidence and things like that so for me i might feel confident to do something but i might or comfortable i don't know what the right word is there but again the more i the more i learn the more i learn that i don't know and i know that that's huge to begin with but Mm -hmm. it helps me knowing what comes later Mm -hmm. to be confident in what i'm doing now and so when i'm working a patient up i might know that i have to get a b and c lab but why? <coughs> why yes. am I getting that? And what if it's if it's positive? Then what happens from there? Mm-hmm. And that's I mean that's a, a limitless question. It is. Mm-hmm. So those are the answers that every day that I work, I learn something. Thank God. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. But yeah. that's what helps me with my confidence. And mm-hmm. yeah, know. that is nice. Um, let's wrap up with just a discussion of the whole burnout stuff. What advice we have for people to avoid burnout? It always comes back to this. Um, but what advice do you guys have for how you can survive in emergency medicine for any length of time? I feel like that's so individual again. I mean, I think, you know, I've been in emergency medicine as a whole for almost 24 years and I don't feel burnt out. I have days where I'm tired, but overall I love what I do. I love the people I work with and the whole, you know, just God, there's just so much to learn. Um, I, I love that. But I think there are some people, like there are, there are calls that I've run, patients that I've had, that will stay with me forever. Sure. And that's how it's meant to be. And um, I'll never forget them, for good or bad. But uh, that stuff doesn't burn me out. But I think some people it just does. Some people that weighs on their heart differently. And mm. I don't know if it's compartmentalizing or... I I think I heard this term the other day, um, like compassion fatigue. You just get, um, just, I I don't know how to, like you're focused so much on like, and you're there to help sick people. And then there's people who are just like abusing you verbally and screaming at you. And like baritone, I had a guy the other night that just wanted to ride home. And I think... (laughs) That that ended my week for me. It was just getting yeah. screamed at and yelled at because I wouldn't get him a ride home. And he's like, if I would have known that I, you wouldn't give me a ride home, I wouldn't, like, you wouldn't have called an emergency line <laughs> right. because you were intoxicated. Right. Wow, what lesson did we learn? And so <laughs> compassion fatigue is, and I'm still so new, but I will hit a burnout point where I'm like, I no longer think I can interact with someone in an appropriate manner. And I have to take a few days to be around my family or my friends Mm -hmm. medicine i'll never stop getting interested in but being able to sit and want to sit with a person that waxes and wanes depending what type of patients or the amount of patients that you have that week and Mm. um yeah so that uh, when i remember hearing about compassion fatigue i was like ah that's what i have i'm not burnt out i just i i no longer can give my energy anymore to people who are so who don't want to hear yeah. the stuff that I have to say. I'm similar to you, Tracy. I feel like currently, at least I'm not burned out at all. I feel like I could do this indefinitely. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I enjoy the job most days. And like you said, you're tired some days, some days mm-hmm. you're like, yeah, I don't feel like going in, but you can do it. And you're not 
burned out by it. But I mean, I've had times when I've been burned out, you know, when I was a paramedic working, going to school at the same time, yeah. you know, that stuff does wear on you. You don't have enough mm-hmm. time for yourself or your family. But now I feel like the work-life balance is there where I have enough time with my family and hoping to increase that time as the years go on, you know, mm-hmm. to some degree. But at the same time, I feel like I have enough time off in between shifts where when I go back, I'm like, ah, I kind of feel energized and feel like yeah. I can do this, you know, and take the time to actually have meaningful patient interactions and not just treating them all as patients, actually taking a couple times a day to sit down with the patient and actually make them feel understood. I feel like that really is an underutilized way to combat burnout is actually connecting with your patients. And we just don't have That's time for it. You have to be intentional or it's easy to go throughout your day and not do it because we're so busy. Mm-hmm. It's very, you have to be intentional about it. And I think that makes a big difference. And I think of the word grace a lot throughout the day, every single day. And I always think, um, I want people to give me grace and I need to give them grace sometimes, Mm. whether it's lack of understanding, whether they're having a bad day, whether they're just a jerk, you know, um, and I don't always give them grace back and they don't always deserve it. But there are sometimes it just, I kind of get a little reminder that everyone needs some grace. I'll offer a couple quick thoughts. I was just jotting to myself here. Hopefully that wasn't rude because I didn't want to forget what I was going to say, but I wanted to hear what you guys had to offer. So I didn't just repeat everything, but um, <clears throat> I will say, number one, I'd be burnt out in this job if I didn't know God put me here. So mm-hmm. if uh, if you're out there and you haven't really thought about your ultimate purpose in life or if you don't believe in a God, then maybe this doesn't necessarily apply to you. But I encourage you to think about whether that's right or wrong because if you, if you know God and you know he made you for this purpose because you've asked and tested it, um, then I, I know I won't burn out as crummy as I can feel at times, as worn out as I can feel. I won't crash and burn because I know I'm called to be here. And so that drives me every day, knowing that this is my purpose at this time. Um, That said, on the whole compassion comment, I've heard compassion fatigue, so I don't want to trounce on that by going backwards and saying that's not a thing. But I will say the alternative that I've heard about, thought about, and there's actually full academies with, um, with courses on this for medical professionals, learning the difference between <laughs> empathy and compassion. <clears throat> Running out of empathy can lead to burnout in a heartbeat. Learning a bit about the difference between empathy, you know, putting yourself in someone's shoes, which we tend to carry right home in our own shoes, mm. is different than having compassion in that moment and being able to let go and walk away. I found that when I learned that, it did help me for a short time. It still helps me when I reflect on it now. If I'm running out of empathy it's probably because i'm confusing the two i don't have to put myself in their shoes anymore which i tend to wear heavily versus i can have compassion for the circumstance in the moment whether it's their own bad choices whether it's a true emergent situation that's going to have a very depressing ending i tend to carry it home less when i look at it as i had compassion in the moment versus i really you know put myself where they're at Mm -hmm. i don't i don't dig that as much anymore because it weighs on you over the years the more people you do that for sure that's me personally um, and then the other thing is finding alternatives to what you're doing now. If you're burning out in, a, in the field of emergency medicine, I realize also someone in like a paramedic shoes may find some of this unfeasible just due to finances. <laughs> There's a big salary difference between an MD and a paramedic. I get that. So when I say work less, it may not be an option. I get that. But in my mind, working hard now to work a little less later or overtime is important to me because I don't think I could put in a solid 20 doing this day in, day out at this pace but I think I could put in a solid 10 or 12 if I had something to look forward to, like one or two shifts less a month. In addition, <clears throat> um, learning and teaching are my little side escapes. Some people might find that stressful, but I'm just throwing ideas out there. If you find you like a side gig, find that side gig. My side hustle, per se, may add a little work to me, actually, in 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 total effort, writing letters and, and you know things of that nature. But taking on students and teaching is a side gig to me. I feel like the shifts that I have a student, which are not too many, I don't want to burn myself out on that front, but teaching helps me feel like I did something for even more than the patients that I had. And a lot of these patients in emergencies don't have emergencies. They didn't need squat. They didn't need to be there, let's be honest. Look at your 911 calls, all my paramedic friends. When you got there and realized they don't need anything, they called because they're drunk and home alone and didn't want to be alone. It's not an emergency. They don't need your help. Yes, it's a waste of your time. However, it's going to happen again tomorrow. So, you know, the shift that I spent with a student, teaching them about emergencies that maybe we didn't see one that day. So let's just sit down and talk about cardiology for an hour and dysrhythmias. That rejuvenates me. So side gigs are important. And then in my mind, <clears throat> working hard and playing hard has saved me. You know, even if I'm tired on a day off, if I'm flipping over from night shifts, 
I tell you what, I push myself those days to get up and go. If my kids want to go mountain biking, if I want to go to the gym for a two a day and roll in the morning and lift heavy at night, I'm going to do it. And at the end of the day, I feel better for it. So, And now that's personality dependent. I don't sit still well. I don't wear down easily. <laughs> I don't need caffeine. But then I drink it and annoy everybody else. That entertains me, so I do that too. But I that work hard. Us too. <laughs> I work real hard, and then I play real hard. Whether I got one day's off or eight, I'm abusing every second of it, and that keeps me going. I think that's probably been my biggest struggle is the hours, and you, it will make you feel so isolated from life if you are working the overtime, the late night shifts, because then you don't have your day, and then it's hard to find time with hobbies so I'm trying to go you know I need to make the most of the (coughs) little bit of daytime that I have so to speak or I don't want to be social today but I have to for my mental Mm well-being I I need to be around not hospital people not medicine I need to be around anything else and so holding on to that so you don't get lost in it is important and a very like a habit that I've had to build for myself because I so badly want to go to work and then go home and go to bed right mm-hmm. and that can and healthy habits right like yeah I'll tell you right now if you're the guy who gets off work every day and says this was a rough day I'm just gonna have three beers that's not play hard no. that's probably not helping you no nope. you know disturbing your own sleep cycle doing something that's not good for your body yeah. you're gonna go into that next shift feeling it a little worse and you're like no I had a good yeah. time I promise you that's probably not the right way to cope yep. and it's a slippery slope <laughs> it sure is more and more and it more it sure is get some sunshine instead do something mm-hmm. yeah. I agree with that too I also think some like the reflection too one yeah. of the biggest things for me um, or just over the years listening to people that have burnt out um, it's owning your mistakes because if you don't own your mistake, that's the one thing you're going to go, that's going to be on repeat in your head every night. And I've, mm-hmm. I've, I have made some mistakes and I own them. I own them hard and I um, I will never blame anybody else for them. I will never try to say, oh, you know, this happened because, you know, so-and-so did this and so-and-so did that. No, no, no. It happened because I did this mm-hmm. and I shouldn't and I will never do it again. Right. Um, and I think those owning those kind of things are important too because Absolutely. then you can kind of put those on a shelf as well and say yep it sucked and again i'm going to carry that forever huh. but it's done yeah and i'm not doing it again that yeah. fascinates me that you would say that because you <laughs> caught me at an interesting time aaron will know what i'm talking about we had a patient in the last three months that, i don't know that i'd call it a mistake but that ending was not what i expected mm-hmm. i owned that and thought i better deal with this now and own up to my part of missing that mm-hmm. and uh I will admit that kind of thing is the opposite for me. I feel like that leads to a little bit of burnout for me when really? I own the big ones and set them on the shelf. Even if it wasn't a mistake, which this case wasn't, I'm the, I, I, maybe that's personality dependent too. I'm still losing sleep over it and still replaying it on moments in my mind and going, ah, sh- I need but to don't you think, if think you, about that right now. Do you think if you didn't own it that you would lose more sleep? Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe you're right. I but I, in my opinion, that's one of those, in my experience, not opinion, in my experience for yeah. my, my own self, these are part of the things that are going to shorten this career for me a little bit. I don't know that I could do it forever because you can't save everybody. Yeah. yeah. Maybe there's nothing that probably would have changed the outcome of this patient, but you still, nope. it's still something you carry yeah, with that's you That's probably regardless. the frustrating part, yeah. I'm assuming, for you, is that it was completely out of my control. Yeah. yeah. That's, part of it's even that, the frustration of knowing. That's where I get yeah. lost. If I'm like, if I was just there, you know, five minutes faster it's like yeah. there's nothing in this universe that would have made that happen unless i went back in time yeah. and it's so hard just to know there's literally not anything i could have done casey yeah. talks about that all the time with paramedics like if they're frustrated like oh if i just tubed them quicker or done this quicker or been there faster it's if it's their day it's their day and there's it's not true. anything you can and do that's to change such a sometimes. hard yeah. thing especially for a i feel like a career field Mm-hmm. Where the goal is to save someone is it's just right. it's just not going to happen, and yeah. that's like, what do you mean that's not going to happen? I have yeah. everything at my disposal. How is that not going to happen? And yeah. it's, yeah. I guess that's what I mean. You know, this life nobody's getting out of it alive, not here at least. And <laughs> and so that said, you took on a job where the goal is to cheat death. This it's kind of so like gambling. Like, yeah, good days and some bad <laughs> days. That's the job. Some of that may lead to burnout, depending on your personality. Some of it people thrive on. I'm fifty fifty. Yeah. I don't think we're built to see that kind of stuff right. and deal with that kind of stuff and go, oh, well, that's just the way life is. It's really hard to go, you know, and then that's just a whole different yeah. existential crisis in and of itself. Why Why yeah. is that the way life is? So it's, you know, I can be like Tracy and go, that was something. I will never do it again. And I learned and I'm moving it's, forward now. And then there's other things where I'm like, 
I never want to be in that situation again for the rest of my life. And there's right. no preventing that. And there's no right. controlling that. Yeah. yeah. It's fear of the unknown, I'd say, leads to my little bit of burnout. That's why I went I took the job because I'd be bored doing anything else, no doubt. And on the side, that little fear of the unknown is what wears me down. It's oh, really? I went, I went into yeah. medicine, I think I brought this up last time, because I hated not being prepared. And I felt like I was always in situations <laughs> where I was at a dirt bike track, and then I watched a guy flip over the bike, and I was like, I don't know how to help you, or I was... I had snuck out one night in high school and the house that I was walking by caught on fire and I was like, what do I do? <laughs> and so I'm like, for the love of God, I need to be prepared. And so I went into it and then being moderately a hypochondriac, I was like, at least if I know the signs of a stroke, I know I'm not having one. <laughs> and so mine is absolutely, if I just know everything, then I can keep everything from happening, which is, and I have undergrown and learned that that is an incredibly dangerous mindset because it's just not going to work out that it's way okay. all the time. But it's, yeah. Giving me a sense is, of there's a field where you can constantly learn something all the time. Oh yeah, all the time. It just yeah. you know and give me that false sense of control, you yeah. know, and so that's what medicine's done <laughs> thus far. Yeah, that's funny. I feel just opposite. Like again, yeah, it goes back to that. The more I know, <laughs> the less control I feel I have. You know. Yeah. Although, well, so as a paramedic versus a PA, as a paramedic, I mean, you're the boss. You don't have anybody yeah. to rely on, and so yeah. that's where I thrive. That's you throw me to the wolves and I'll do my best work. Yeah. And because I don't have anybody to to you to rely on, to I'm like okay, well, and I'm and I have to, I have to put a smile on my face and act like I know what I'm doing. Whether I, the duck, hmm. you got to be the duck, right? And so, yeah. whereas a PA, I have a doc. You know, if I, so, I always feel like I have backup, and I, um, mm-hmm. which is good and bad. It is good and bad. That's mm-hmm. exactly how I ended up where I am. I talked about being a PA or an NP. Mm-hmm. for a year before I decided to apply to med school. I was mm-hmm. like, that's what I want to do. I'm mobile. Yeah. I'll learn a lot. Yeah. And, and then I had a doc friend look at me and go, no, you're going to be an asshole. And I went, why? <laughs> you're going to have a scope this big. You're going to yep. go ask a question to someone with a scope this big, and you're going to be pissed off. You don't know it. You're going to take it out in the world. Yeah. So I, I agree. You, if you know you're the personality that thrives best when you're forced to be in control, assuming that's not an arrogant statement, then go do it. It helps them. Yeah. 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 I think because you're forced to figure it out. Yeah, yeah. And you're just, yeah. you just have to do it. You just and have there's, to do it. there's no asking anybody else. And so, yeah, yeah I definitely. If you're do. the kind of person who's scared of heights and therefore you stand on the roof, <laughs> you know, <laughs> once a week, yeah, you should probably be in emergency medicine in some capacity. <laughs> That's for you. Yeah. Yeah, in a lot of ways, being a paramedic was more stressful than being a PA, at least in our system, just because we have so much support. Which makes my day that much less stressful. I mean, maybe emergency mm-hmm. medicine is more stressful for a physician where you're you're it. You got to figure it out. For us, you know, a physician usually is readily at hand, and so I don't have to always have all the answers, which makes my day a little bit easier. Yeah, I mean, as a PI, I can pull an answer out of my pocket, but boy, that also, if I'm working with Adam, if I'm working with you know all the other different, your your answer to some of those questions is different mm-hmm. depending on who you're yeah, working right. with and so and, and depending on where you practice as a PA there's definitely yeah. very different environments where you know it is on the PA if you're in a mm-hmm. very rural center where there is no physician you know it's it, we have that advantage in our system for sure we do. I, this has nothing to do with what we're talking about and I don't know why I keep thinking about this but um, I think about being a, a, a field training officer I remember my first day not my first day my first remember Chad mm-hmm do you remember how he kind of talked like this yeah. all the time, right? And <laughs> so funny. I was he was EMT and I was his field training officer and God, he just no, he was paramedic and he just he'd done a few things and he just kept mess, messing up and I was like so gung ho like you're not gonna make a mistake under my watch and you know and and I was I was known for being a hard ass but he was you my were. first. I, I know. I, <laughs> I, um, and it was so funny. I remember when I remember when, like I remember where I was. I remember in the I was getting on for something. He looks at me and he goes. You know, Tracy, you don't always have to be a sadistic fucking bitch. <laughs> and I'm like, I literally fell out of the ambulance. I laughed so hard and I thought, what? What a humbling, amazing, wonderful way to know how to talk to me. <laughs> you know, I don't know. It just was really funny. I don't know why I keep thinking about that during these That's conversations. That's so funny. Just, yeah. you, you precepted me, or not precepted, you were my field training officer when I was going through as a paramedic and I remember one report I gave to some physician and I said bile instead of sputum I said they coughed up bile Uh and afterwards you were like Aaron 
you know the difference between sputum and bile? <laughs> sputum. Bile's what you vomit. Sputum is what I they coughed up. I was like, oh man, you're super smart. <laughs> Busted. You were a hard ass though. You're, oh, you you're said known. that so sweetly. <laughs> I can see it. I can see it. Yeah. Some people may not to do know what to do with the face and the tone that is true and not sarcastic and innocent when she says do you know the difference between sputum and bile? <laughs> or my, what you said earlier, one of my favorite things to say to people is, walk me through your thought process. Yeah. Like, without yeah. being like, that was the most ridiculous mm-hmm. thing I've ever heard. Yeah. Like, split, walk me through it. Yeah. And show me. Big. Right. Yeah. And there, good it, reason. it's usually right. almost instant panic if I don't, yeah. I don't really want to. Are there any particular qualities you guys think are necessary for working in emergency medicine? Character qualities or otherwise? I don't know. I feel like we see every type of person out there, but I think you have to have specifically in emergency medicine, you cannot be easily offended. Yep. Thick skin. Well, thick yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You cannot be sensitive yeah. in any capacity of, and I, you like coworkers, you can't take things personally when you're in a bad rush or if someone says mm. things with a bad tone, cause you have to just know the stress that everyone's under. Yeah. And then as you mentioned earlier, the people that are coming in and, whether they are an emergency, they are miserable, typically, whatever they're going through. So you have mm. to understand that mo- most of the time, they're not trying to be a pain, that they are just miserable and they don't have anywhere to put it. Yeah. So to be patient with that. Um, or even if they are trying to be a pain. Okay. That's the thick skin part. I think oh. if, you, if you're sensitive yeah. to everything, you know who you are. I'm not, you know, it's, it's, it's personality. Again, it's just who you are. That's okay. If you're easily offended, this is going to be a tough one. Mm-hmm. It just is to last any length of time. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's a rough environment. It just mm-hmm. is. The field is. People are tough. We all know that. The emergency department's a, a rough little cave. Everybody knows that people are hard. Even the people that are so sweet they can't bring themselves to say it. You dang well know it. And if they get under your skin easily, that you it might not make it too long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, and sense of humor. The flip side of that, you have yeah. to have a good sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think. Mm-hmm. I, would have, I wouldn't opinion. enjoy work without the, the, the dark humor that people have to get through. Yeah. Otherwise, everything is just so heavy. Yeah. So yeah. you have to be able to find the the light or the laughs in it and yeah. to not be like to go okay well i'm gonna brush that off real fast um and then i think the ability to co- the ability to compartmentalize if you cannot do that and i didn't think i could do it especially after i had my daughter i was like i'm way too emotional right now my hormones mm. are everywhere um and then i leveled out and i was like okay i know where to put this i know what to take home and what not to take home and so you can put yourself in a, a box to not panic and to sit and slow down for a second and go all right what do i do i want to act now do i want to act in a little bit but if you cannot compartmentalize and you're letting everything move at 100 miles per hour up there i think you're gonna hurt yourself and hurt someone else and be miserable to be around yeah i think yeah i think it's important to compartmentalize at least on the provider side too you have to focus on one task at a time and sometimes Mm -hmm. we have so many things going on and it's easy to focus on all of them at the same time. And you have to realize, I need to do this disposition, go talk to this one patient, and yep. move on to the next thing. Even though there's, well, there's a whole bunch of stuff bouncing around in my brain, i got to focus on one thing at a time or none of it's going to get done. Mm-hmm. And so you do have to be able to do that and move on from you know, a patient that may, may have just died. You've got to move on because you've got to keep seeing other patients. You, know, you don't have time to process that. And you probably should later, but yeah. the dark humor, the compartmentalization helps you to move on and get through the day at least, mm. you know, to think about that stuff. Later I had on. A, a code white last night that I didn't even realize was a code white until I was in the elevator going up to OBED. And then it turned into a cold blue. And then I immediately get back down to the ED after I get her situated. And yeah, and I have someone yelling at me because I wouldn't let him go outside and smoke a cigarette. Right. And I was like, you, uh, no, you're on oxygen right now. You are not. And then screaming at me. And I'm like, I don't know if that woman upstairs got to have her baby or not. Yeah. And it's just, you know, and so being able to, yeah, be like, all right, I'm going to put that there. I'm going to deal with it and process it in a moment. Right now I have to sit and let this person, you know, take the time to explain to them why they cannot go outside with an oxygen mm-hmm. take and a lit cigarette. It's whiplash. I mean, you're dealing with 
you know, Instantly. super high acuity all the way to why, you know, having to explain something so mundane. It's like constant cortisol, seconds. but whether it's like from your adrenaline or anger or sadness, it is yeah. across the board, all of them. Yeah. All of I'll them tell you what, time. this is going to sound nuts, and I don't think anyone's ever said this on your podcast. I'll bet <laughs> you actually right now, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. The more years you have me on this thing, by the way, it's probably going to get worse. On this <laughs> I'll tell you, if, if you're the personality that can't let someone have it, if you can't pipe up, when someone's doing some something wrong, abusing the system, treating someone bad, talking to you with disrespect, if you're the kind of person that doesn't do well with conflict, you may not last very long either. Because every now and then, you can call this countering burnout. I'll tell you what, someone needs to get it. Someone mm-hmm. other than yourself needs to be humbled. Every now and then, someone's going to cross a line that doesn't need to be crossed. Right. Being able to put your foot, like having those boundaries and boundaries. Putting, yep. putting your boundaries. foot down, like, hey, yeah, the whole you know, world yeah. talks about boundaries. In emergency medicine, you can't talk about boundaries because right. it's a medical legal system. I disagree, yep. and I don't practice medical legal medicine. You better set some boundaries. Yep. Some oh, people just need it. I do appreciate that about the, you know, the place that I work at yeah. is. I've been told by a lot of people, don't let them talk to you that way. Right. I'm like, okay, as long, because before that I was in the service industry where it was yeah. like, you can't speak to them out right. that way. Yeah, and I'm right. like, all right, so at least now where I work, it's like, don't, we're not tolerating that. And yeah. I'm like, all right, thanks, it's I appreciate okay that. It's okay to set boundaries in the ER. Yeah. Just because we're dealing yeah. with emergencies, there's, it's not appropriate to be getting kicked and punched at work. No, right? that's not or my... hit on or violated. Yeah, it's not my job right. description to be, to tolerate this in that's any right. capacity. And I'm just as much of a human as you're a human. I'm just a human here to help you right now so i yeah. being able to set that and in a respectful manner that you're not enabling because yeah. i've had to right. ha- talk to people That's where i'm like you're antagonizing i know they were a pain but you're antagonizing them and so being able to do it without enabling um and not get hot-headed is yeah. is treading that fine line too yeah. of being able to shut it down without encouraging all right let's go yeah. Yeah. Fight. i can't tell you how many places i've worked in where i've had to actually say to some excellent seasoned nurses you do realize this shit would come to a halt if you could just stop talking because they're burnt <laughs> that, and you're not helping. Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. I'll deal with this room. Take a mm-hmm. seat. Feel free. Put your feet up. Have a cookie. Yep. <laughs> uh, leave. Yeah. I've, <laughs> right. I've been in that situation before where I'm getting and it, it's just going back and forth. Like it's if just you just going. stop engaging, mm-hmm. like, ah, you're right. <laughs> I just need to, why am I arguing with Take this person? Breather, right? Yeah. Right. And it's just so hard because sometimes they really know mm-hmm. things yeah. that the things that's the say. flip personality. If you're the kind that's just constantly ready to go to the bar and take a swing, you probably aren't going to last long. You got to be in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that whole, that's an internal question of which hill am I willing to die? Am I I'm willing to die yeah. on this argumentative hill? But yeah. Uh, maybe today, maybe <laughs> not today. Right. Yeah. Tomorrow maybe. Some days I have more patience. Yeah. And then I have days where, like, I walk in, someone immediately starts screaming at me, and I'm like, "We're gonna try it again." And I close the door, and I'm like, "You're gonna take a second, and I'm gonna take a second Or I apply things that I've like used with my daughter. I'm like, "We're yeah. not good. I'm gonna set you on the ground, and I'm gonna walk away." <laughs> so I'm, right. We're not good right, right now, and just yeah, it it, it comes and goes it does. with days, mm-hmm. or if you have back to back days of <clears throat> awful, you're like. Today is not the day. I should not be knowing where you shouldn't be at the time. Yep. That There's nothing wrong with taking a step back and taking a break, tapping in somebody else. Because, I mean, often that's what it takes. I mean, you can see when somebody else is getting emotional about it, like tap them out. Like, hey, I'll come in and talk to this patient. Try to de-escalate them. You don't have to stand in there for an hour, you know. Yeah. No, it's not. No one. No one. I like to tell, like, people I'm precepting, you didn't come out of the womb knowing this. You have to practice and learn it there's Mm -hmm. i don't expect you to come here and and know this even people have been doing it for a while i'm like you don't know everything so it's i tried not to knock anybody um but if like they come in they're like like, i just can't make this work and i'm like there's no reason for you to that's not this is not where you're supposed to be at the moment we're gonna scooch and then someone else is gonna come in and sometimes it's just a face some people don't like my face and then another person goes in and they're like (laughs) I'll listen. You said it exactly what she said, but I liked the way you yeah. said it better. And I'm like, whatever. Sounds good. All so right. Amy all the time, that Southern accent, you know. <laughs> oh. You, you and I could say the exact same thing. They're and they could say, you know, you Yankee bitch. And oh, look how nice <laughs> she is, you know. Oh, oh. Right, I'll talk like Matt V again is somehow has his way yeah, with yeah, the, the older cranky women that come in. I, one woman was like, do not touch me. And I was like, okay. And then he comes in. He's like, hi, what can I do? She's like, oh, you sweet young man. Fuck. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Okay. Uh, it's just not my yeah, and yeah. so I was like, you know, this is your yeah. cup of tea. That is yeah. your niche of you can have the rest of them. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> you guys have anything else you want to mention before we sign off? Cool. Huh? Thanks, guys. Thanks for your time. Appreciate yeah. you being here. I know you're all busy, so I really appreciate it. Thanks, Aaron. Oh, God, I could make this one, Aaron. Thanks for asking. Yeah, yeah absolutely. This is always.